through here. Hey YouTube, today is uh, Sunday and uh, since I was home alone, I thought well maybe I'll go out for a hike and take one of my favorite old cameras along. It's a Kodak number three model H, um, which I modified to shoot 120 roll film. And I thought I'd bring you along on the journey. After several weeks of rain, snow, and cold, it was nice to finally have a sunny day. I'll be shooting Ilford's FP4 Plus, which is a 125 speed film. Since I was going to be shooting long exposures, I figured the speed really wasn't that critical. The number three pocket Kodak is a roll film camera designed for the no longer available 118 roll film. This film produced three and a quarter inch by four and a quarter inch negatives, which is pretty close to large format. I made some homemade spacers so I could load it with 120 roll film. Loaded with the 120 film, I get a 6 cm by 11 cm negative. Because the rear sight glass is useless for 120 film, I had to calculate how many turns to load the film and how many to advance it. For my Model H, it takes on average 7 full turns to get the first frame set, and 2 and a half turns to advance to the next frame. Half, 1, 2, 6, seven, This will usually give me 5 or 6 exposures per roll of 120 film. Okay. Even though the temps were above freezing, there was still snow on the trail. The footbridge was a little slick. The last thing I wanted was to end up in the creek. The number three folding pocket Kodak was manufactured by the Eastman Kodak Company from 1900 to 1915. This Kodak camera probably had the most model variations of any Kodak camera made. This version is the last of the line, the Model H. It features an anastigmat lens with an aperture range of f4 all the way to f128. Yes, you heard that right, f128. That's practically a pinhole aperture. With the tiny aperture, focus is usually not a problem, which is why focus distances are set at 100 feet, 25 feet, 10 feet, and 6 feet. The Model H has a ball bearing shutter with three speeds, 1 100th, 1 50th, and 1 25th, plus a bulb and time setting. I usually use the time setting because I mostly shoot long exposures. It's impressive how the ball bearing shutter has remained accurate after over a hundred years. The Model H also has a rotating waist level viewfinder. Because 120 film is narrower than 118, the viewfinder is barely usable when framing your shot. It is also challenging because the image is reversed. The number three pocket Kodak has a quarter 20 mounting nut on the lens plate for portrait shooting and one on the bottom of the body for landscape. 
Isn't it nice that the quarter 20 standard has survived to this day? I just love this modern tripod. To get the best results when shooting a vintage camera, I like to use a light meter on my phone. Everybody wants to ask you what you're doing. Nothing draws attention to you more than shooting a 100-year-old camera. With a long exposure, I also use my phone for a countdown timer. Here is a 10-second exposure at f128. I love the creamy look of the water and the great details in the leaves and the rocks. The light was pretty flat at that time of day as the sun had already set behind the mountain. I have found that flat, diffuse light works best for long exposures. I developed these in Rodinol mixed at 1 to 100, standing for an hour. I believe this gives the shadows a chance to develop without blowing out the highlights. Let's try opening up the lens to f32 and exposing it for 2 seconds. I am always impressed with the resolving power of these old cameras. Vintage photography takes time. I probably spent about an hour at those falls talking to people and shooting just six frames. You can't be in a hurry or you'll mess it up. I managed to only get three decent negatives from the roll because of a mistake I made. But I consider it a win if I get just one good image. Plus, being out in nature on a beautiful day is always a bonus. thanks for coming along. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.